In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about the Julia variables and some concepts like constants in Julia, comments in Julia, and finding the types of the variables in Julia. To define a comment in Julia, we use a hash sign and uh, we write our comment. We usually use comments while we are actually explaining our code snippet to someone else. For example, someone else will come and read your code and uh, by reading the comments that you have provided, he can understand that line, that snippet of code. For using a multi-line comment, we use hash equal sign and write our multi-line comment and end it with equal hash sign. If I don't use the equal hash sign, the whole lines that all lines that come after the hash equal sign will be considered as a comment, as you can see. So we have to end it with equal hash sign. To define a variable x and assigning a value 12 to it, we define it like this, x is equal to 12. And to get the type of the variable x, we use the function type of, which gives us the concrete type of x. And there are some examples provided over here in the VS Code extension of Julia. To, for example, if I run this line, uh, you'll see that I get the int64. I've actually run this line by using the control enter, or you can use shift enter to run the line and go to the next line. Over here, x is equal to, we can assign another value actually to x by manipulating the variable that we had defined before. x is equal to x plus 10, as you can see. We can define uh, several variables in one line x is equal to 12, y is equal to 15, and z is equal to 18. We have actually assigned several values 12, 15, 18 in one line to variables x, y, z respectively. And y is equal to x power 4 plus 2x is another way of manipulating variables and assigning them to another variable. We can change the data type of the x and actually we had assigned value 12 to x over here. Now we are assigning a string to x. So we are dynamically changing the data type of the variable. Over here we have assigned the numerus.com to x. And if we run this line and go and check out the type of the variable x, as you can see, it's a string. But before that, it was in 64 because we had assigned the value 12 to the variable x. Over here, you can see I've assigned the value 3.14 to the variable w, and we can check the type of it. Uh, as you can see, it said float 64. A variable name cannot start with a number, but you can use uppercase, lowercase, and underscore. For example, over here, we have used underscore x, y, z, and it's considered a variable. We can print the x, y, z's value or the data that it holds like this in the repo. And uh, you can see 432. We also can use Unicode characters for variable or function names in Julia. We can actually define the gamma by using a slash gamma and writing tab. For example, I can type gamma and use tab and assign a different value. Over here, gamma is equal to 45 and over here, gamma is equal to 12. You can write alpha by using a slash alpha and then hitting tab on keyboard. So over here, I had already defined the alpha equal to 15. I can get its value in the Julia repo because I am not using the semicolon, it prints to the last result and prints 15 in the repo. You can write uh, superscripts or subscripts by using Unicode characters in Julia and they are considered as a variable name, but uh, I don't recommend them uh, for complex programs because it makes them, makes, makes your program confusing while you're actually calling the names of these variables because uh, they are hard to handle when they become a lot or when they are scattered in different parts of your code. So over here, uh, I can use beta 
I can type beta tab and forward slash underscore zero and tab again. And as you can see, it types beta subscript zero. And gamma superscript one is written as gamma. You type gamma, press tab, and use forward slash. Type this and you can run to actually gamma to the power of one. Or gamma over here, it's not gamma to the power of one, actually, it's gamma superscript one. And we can assign a different value to it. You can see that it prints the value 11 in the Julia repo. There are some keywords in Julia that you that are reserved and you cannot use them as a variable name. For example, over here I have I've commented, I've I've used a multi-line comment and listed them over here. You can check this out in the documentation of the Julia. Bear module begin, break, catch, const, continue, and the list goes on. For example, I cannot define begin as a variable. It it throws an error. And it has thrown an error and we cannot use the reserved keywords as a variable name. The same is holding for if, as you can see, it throws an error. So I comment this line and there are some predefined constants in Julia. For example, pi, we can type pi in the Julia by typing actually forward slash pi and hitting tab. And its value is uh, defined as the value of the constant pi. Pi and hitting tab gives the value of pi. And there are other predefined constants like the Euler constant. We can type forward slash Euler hitting tab and we get its value. See, there are some naming, naming style conventions in Julia that you can use for your variable names, function names. We can break the uh, several several word variable names uh, by using underline bet between them or, or under underscore between them and uh, for example over here we can define the variable first name like this and assigning the value numerous to it or we can uh, use lowercase for the first part and uh, start the st start the Second word character with a uppercase letter and the rest of it be the lowercase. And there are several other naming style conventions for defining variables in Julia. We can also assign values to multiple variables in one line. For example, I have defined P, Q, R and assigned 8, 9, 10 to them respectively. As you can see, the P holds the value 8, Q value 9 and R value 10. We can swap the values of the variables by using this one line, one line of code, p comma q is equal to q comma p. Uh, but in other languages, we have to define an intermediate variable which holds value of the of the one of the variables while swapping the values of these two variables. For example, here we can easily use this one liner to swap the values. You can see p holds the value nine, q holds the value eight. But before that, uh, P hold the value 8 and Q hold the value 9. Till now, we, uh, we didn't define the variable types and uh, Julia would automatically infer the types of the variables. We can define variable types as easily as spe specifying them like this, uh, as I have commented over here, specifying them like this. We, we can use the variable name and uh, double colon and the variable type. For instance, we can define the variable u and use double colon and specify its type as in 64. This has common use and specifying the types of variables helps us actually in defining functions that we haven't yet talked about and using features like multiple dispatch, catching errors and code readability for others that actually co read our code. So they can know, they can know beforehand uh, what the type of the variable that they are dealing with is. For example, he, over here, I haven't actually talked about the functions, but over here I have defined a function, sum two numbers, it's in the function name, and this is a reserved keyword in Julia. 
to define a function. And it takes two input arguments and x and y. I have defined the x to be the type of float64 and y to be the type of float64. And it returns the sum of these two arguments that are passed to the function. So if I define this function, sum two numbers, and I call them with two integers as inputs to the function, as you can see, it throws an error and uh, calls us that no method matching sum two numbers in 64 and 64 because we have already specified the data type of x and data type of y. And 12 is an integer and another, this another argument, the second argument 12 is also an integer. But if I comment this line and run this code, since we are passing the floating point number 12, the error goes away. And it actually prints the sum of these two values. If I change this to, for example, 13, 25, as you can see. Another question is, how can we validate if an expression is of a particular type? Uh, for example, we can use expression, double colon, and expression type. This way we can catch errors. For example, I have over here, I have uh, summed the 7 plus 8 and 7 plus 8 times 2. I want to see the, whether the result of this expression is of the type in 64. As you can see, the, the result is printed in the repo. And uh, it, the Julia repo actually hasn't thrown any error for the result of this line. But uh, what about this line? Over here, we have actually multiplied the sum of 7 and 8 by floating point number. So it's, uh, the whole expression is converted to the floating point number. And it's not of type in 64. This must throw an error. As you can see, it, it has thrown an error expected in 64, but got a value of type float64 because of this multiplication by floating point number two. If I comment this line and go to the next line, you, you can see we get the expected type float64. Over here, it's a float64 also. To declare a constant, we can use the const keyword in Julia, but uh, you have to be aware that using the const keyword and the, the name of the constant over here, for example, we have uh, assigned the value numerous to the constant my handle. But if I change the value to another data type, if I change the value of this constant to another data type, Julia Repl throws an error and says invalid definition of constant my handle because we have changed the type of this constant. We have actually, as we have first defined it as a string and then assigned a value of a different data type to this constant. So the Julia REPL throws an error, but if I use the same, if I assign a value to this constant of the same data type that I had already defined this constant with, that is a string over here, the Julia compiler actually does not throw an error, but a warning. And this, in this warning, it says that re redefinition of the constant, my handle, this may fail and cause incorrect answers or produce other errors. So uh, the constant is actually a, a mutable thing in Julia. You can change its value, but you cannot change its data type.